Hello there, my name is Jeff Harrison and I'm going to show you um, a technique to develop a design such as something like this. I had come across a, an article by David Farkas in a Corel magazine from June 1996 and uh, at that time he was showing a method that was fairly convoluted using some envelopes and things like that in Corel Draw and uh, I've learned a lot of stuff from David over the years uh, especially during the mid 90s and uh, to his credit uh, the technique he used was probably uh, suitable at that time uh, because this was talking about Corel Draw 5 and um, since th since then there's some new tools in Corel Draw to help help accomplish a, a design task such as what you see on the screen here so I'm going to show you something or how I do it and then uh, you may be able to see different ways you can use that for other future projects of your own all right so let's clear away the sample that I have there and what I'm going to do here is grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to enable snapping. The fast way to do that is to press the Alt key plus the Z key and uh, I'm going to press Control as I draw a rectangle. It doesn't matter what size it is for the moment. I'm just snapping on as you move your cursor to the edge of a shape like that you can see how it's uh, you know showing up that something is snapping. So what I'm going to do is flip copy uh, to the right here by grabbing the top left corner of this rectangle, holding Control, dragging down over here when I see that blue outline, if I right click, you can see a little plus symbol by my cursor. If I let go, I have a, a duplicate of um, that rectangle. I'm just going to move up here a little bit. And I'm going to uh, do the same thing in the other direction coming down this way, right clicking, and back again this way. So uh, I use the F keys a lot when I'm zooming in Corel Draw to zoom out or inwards. Now that I have this, I'm going to hit Control A to select all four of those rectangles. I'm going to press Control L to combine them. It's also up on your property bar there. Just like that. I'm going to left click on uh, black to fill it with black. I'm going to right click on the no color swatch to get rid of that thin outline that was there before. And I'm going to back away from my document by pressing the F3 key. I'm just going to move this up over here a little bit and scale it inwards just a bit like that. Let's zoom in on it and um, I'm going to, because snapping is still set on, I can grab a left edge of this shape, hold control, move over to the right, and if I move my mouse up you can see that it's aligning to the edge there. I can right click and duplicate it. Now one of my favorite things about Corel Draw is Control R. If I back away from my document, um, I just pressed F3, key, F3 there. If you press Control R, it, replete, it, can, it uh, repeats your last function that you did. And you can just hold down Control R and it'll keep duplicating the last thing, which was to copy that four shapes over to the right. And so now that we have something like this, I'm going to say that that's enough there. I'm just going to select them all, hit Control L. And now all of them are one single curve with uh, about 1,200 nodes or so. Let's zoom in on it. Um, and um, I pressed F4 there, by the way, to zoom in onto that shape. Um, I'm going to hit Control A and do something that's very important here. I'm going to left click on the Convert to Curve icon. That converts all the segments in those rectangles from straight lines to curve segments. That's very important for, for it to curve nicely around shapes later on. Now I'm going to scale it down to the page here a little bit, something like that. Hit P to center to the middle of the page. Now I'm going to take snapping off. Uh, on my property bar here I've got some fast access to snapping tools, but I know that Alt-Z is a, a shortcut key to do that. Now we want to convert this into a brush. And uh, how we do that is you left click on a blank area and press the I key on your keyboard. Now we've, uh, and up on the property bar you want to look specifically for the brush option and we want to left click on the shape and then hit the um, the small diskette there. So we're going to save this artistic media stroke and I'm going to call it um, checker just like that. Okay. Now we've saved that for the future for as a stroke. I'm just going to set it off in the distance there for a moment. I'm going to make a rectangle. You can round a rectangle in different ways. Uh, I've, I have a node, enable node tracking uh, as an icon on my menu bar there, so it allows me to quickly round corners like that. Um, you could dig that out of your options and put it on a toolbar if you want. 
I customize CorelDRAW quite a bit, as you can see, as you can see a long row of custom macros there, for example. Now that we have this particular shape, I'm going to apply that artistic brush, artistic media brush to that shape. How to do that is I'm selecting my shape there. I'm going to press the I key. I'm going to go down to Custom. And the way this is organized now is new to X5, by the way. And now that I've selected that, it should be in my list there. And I'm just going to left click on it. And you can see how it's applied that long row of items around that shape. Now if we play with the, the parameters here, such as 0.5, you can see what happens there. I'm going to try something crazy like 2. And you can see how just one quick uh, parameter change changes the design of that very quickly. So I'm going to go back to, I don't know, maybe 1, see how that looks. How about 0.5? and you get the idea. Now, right now this is still a live um, artistic media brush. I could technically press the F10 key and modify this uh, rectangle because it's still a live rectangle behind the scenes there. And you can see what happened with that. It calculated how to stretch the edges and corners so that that fit around there. Anyway, so let's say we're happy with that. Um, actually, I'm going to left click on the, the thing there and go to one inch, maybe 0.7. Let's see how that looks. Okay, let's say I'm happy with that. I'm going to press uh, Control K to break that artistic media away from the rectangle. So that rectangle is now a separate thing that I can just select and delete like I did there. So now we have just a single curve that we can do all kinds of things with. Uh, I can apply, you know, apply fountain fills to it, whatever, transparencies, just doesn't matter. And uh, so that's a very handy technique to do things that it would be very tedious to do any other way. And by the way, uh, you know, you don't have to apply that artistic media stroke to a pre-existing shape. You could simply just uh, freeform draw something like that. And uh, you can see how it uh, just created it. And X5 has made some pretty good improvements for the smoothness of how artistic media strokes are drawn. So hopefully this uh, quick tutorial will be of use to you in meeting some very unusual design challenges that may come your way.